Welcome to another post commentary for speedrun. I'm just doing post commentaries now whenever I'm too tired to do live commentary, which is quite often nowadays, I feel like. Seems to be a good solution. Anyway, yeah. So this is North German Federation done in less than a year, which is kind of neat. I had to... I worked out the overall strategy quite a while ago, but I've never... It took a while to actually get this below one year, so that's uh, it's nice to finally get that done. Uh, yeah, so I do a lot of setup here in the beginning, which is uh, I kind of got this down to a science. Well, not a science, but I did the same thing every time once I had worked out how I wanted to do. So a lot of it involves sending troops, some troops, most of them over to the west there. I'm gonna send uh, some of them over to the UK and some of them will be lining up to invade Belgium because that's that's a thing that's gonna happen you'll see in a while so I'm making a bit of a roundabout here in order to uh, try to avoid too many troops walking over each other and causing attrition so I'm gonna sphere Holstein and getting an alliance with Netherlands. Decreased relations with Austria, because otherwise I can't justify a war goal on them. But yeah, Holstein is the only country I'm actually going to uh, sphere diplomatically. Which is going to take roughly until like November. So that's really all I have time for. Otherwise, I'm getting an alliance with Netherlands and then military axis. And the reason I'm doing that, which you'll see in a moment, is to then cancel my military access while I have troops in their, within their borders, which will cause them to become exiled. And once they're exiled, I'll be able to move them freely over to the UK. It's a sec, so... We'll see right here, cancel military access, and then they're exiled, and now I can move. Can freely move them, which is neat. The reason I'm gonna do that, you'll see in a moment. Here I noticed that I failed at <laughs> avoiding attrition, so I took a bit of needless attrition there, but what can you do? So these armies are going to prepare to fight Austria uh, later, and I'm trying to set them up. So I'm moving a few troops over to Lignitz along with a Engineer and a Dragoon, because they are later going to go to Vienna and capture that, because that gives quite a lot of war score. So the reason I'm moving over here to the UK is that I ally with Netherlands, and they will soon declare war on Belgium and call me in, and of course Belgium is protected by the UK, so that will drag me into a war with UK. And uh, if I were to actually declare war on the UK directly, I wouldn't be able to move my troops here, because you can't declare war on someone while you have troops in their border, borders, even if they're exiled. But if someone else declares war and I just join as a secondary participant, then it works. So then I can move them over there, and uh, otherwise it would be kind of difficult to get troops to the mainland UK because of their navy and all that. So that's kind of convenient. And I have uh, sort of assembled them because the UK has troops in London. Here's the call to arms. So I put a big stack in London and then small stacks in every province around it so that I can encircle them, which will allow me to instantly wipe that army in London, which is a nice way to start off the start of the war. Meanwhile these armies are going to be invading uh, Belgium to help Netherlands with that, because if we occupy Belgium we get a little bit of ticking war score, and that's gonna help. I'm not actually interested in letting Netherlands annex Belgium, so I'm actually <laughs> I'm not gonna enforce that war goal in the end. Sorry Netherlands. Instead, the actual purpose of this war is to uh, get Hanover from uh, the British sphere. 
because as you may or may not know, if you try to do that diplomatically, then the UK will contest you and it's kind of slow and annoying and probably impossible to do within a year. I mean, maybe you could, but uh, in my experience, kind of difficult. So this is a nice little way to get it through war instead. And of course, I haven't justified any war goal to take them from... to take Hanover. And the reason I don't do that is that I don't have to, because I have... You start the game, Prussia starts the game with like over 7% jingoism. And as long as you don't declare any wars, then that jingoism will stay above 7%. Which means that as soon as I get a bit of war score on the UK here, I can actually add the Hanover war goal during the war. Which eliminates the need for justifying it. And that's actually kind of important, because I need to justify war goals on one war goal in Austria and one on Denmark in order to finish this within a year. So that means there really isn't any time. To justify anything on UK. So it's kind of fortunate that this works. What's not so fortunate is that Belgium attacked me in Brussels. Preferably I'd like to, I do want to wipe Belgium's armies as soon as possible, but I'd rather do offensive battles because Prussia has way better attack generals than defense generals at the start and uh, if you attack, you also get to sort of pick your own battles. You don't need, really need to respond to what the enemy does, which can be a bit awkward. But nonetheless, they ended up attacking me in Brussels, so now I kind of have to just roll with it and run over there and help. And of course, as soon as I move in with my big army, they just retreat. And I haven't, will have none of that, so I'll be chasing them to try to wipe them out. Because once I wipe Belgium's armies, then of course we can just freely occupy them. Which is a lot easier than trying to occupy them while they still have armies running around, messing things up. So here I try to send some of the more damaged regiments back to my own territory to reinforce. That's sort of a... you kind of... you're kind of spreading yourself thin in this run because you have to fight on a lot of different fronts early in the game so it's kind of important to uh, switch out a bit to move uh, damaged regiments back to let them reinforce while uh, having other armies that fight and stuff so so here in the UK I'm just spreading out, occupying stuff while I wait for British, more British armies to arrive. They usually take a little while. I'll be mostly focused on fighting battles because that gives you, it gives you war score a lot faster than focusing on occupations. So I'll mostly try to fight battles, but of course I can't do that until they actually show up. So, so yeah, just waiting for I of course built like 10 artillery right at the start, and here I add a war goal by the way. It's important to remember to add this before you declare war on Austria, because once you do declare war on Austria, your jingoism will drop, and then you can't add the handover war goal. <laughs> I've actually failed like multiple attempts because I forgot to do that, which is kind of annoying, but at least I remembered this time. I'm out of Switzerland, so I decided to call them in. I haven't called in my other spearlings, mostly because I'm waiting for more of them to send alliance offers. I don't really have the diplo points to spare to send any alliance offers to anyone. So it's basically just RNG whether other countries want to ally you or not. And it's not super crucial that you get a lot of allies, but it does help, I think. So anyway, as I was saying about the artillery, you only start with uh, not that much artillery, but of course it's quite important to have artillery. So I use all the available regiments that I can recruit to recruit more artillery. And ideally, it would have been nice to be able to wait for them to 
finish recruiting before you start wo fighting wars, but you don't really have time for that, so you're just gonna have to add them as they as they come. Again, trying to switch out some of the more damaged regiments. Ideally, when you fight battles, you want to have a full front line and a full back line of artillery, and like I think you want like two cavalry regiments because they can attack on the flanks to add a bit of extra if you outnumber your men your enemy. So that helps a bit. In earlier attempts, I kind of tried to just wipe Belgium's armies, and then I kind of just left Belgium and figured, you know, Netherlands can deal with it, but I found that they were a bit too slow at actually occupying Belgium, which meant that I didn't get war score quickly enough, so in this attempt I decided to like stick around and help them occupy most of it before I move east to fight Austria and stuff. So I spend quite a lot of time just paused thinking about what to do because I don't want to miss anything. So I apologize if that gets a bit uh, boring, but it's kind of necessary. You don't really have a lot of leeway for uh, suboptimal play here if you want to get this below a year. I know that from experience because I've failed many times. So yeah, here's some British armies beginning to show up. So they will usually not try to attack your stacks, rather they would just try to go to provinces that you occupied to try to take them back. Which is nice, because then you can just, you know, gather up and attack them without having to actually, without having to fight on British controlled land, which is good because you take less attrition and stuff while you're on land that you control. You also reinforce uh, faster I believe. So I'm just waiting for these occupations to finish and then I move in, make sure to heftily outnumber them, which is quite nice because uh, the uh, combat width is very large in the early game. And it's nice to have some reserves in the battle. Yeah, okay, so here I decide to call in my spearlings ahead of... And I have to do this manually because I joined as a secondary participant, so I can just call them in immediately. Since I'm a great power, I took over leadership of the war. So that means I can still call in other allies. So I just do that. I believe if I wait a day they should show up, but first I have to figure out what to do with this. <laughs> these guys. I'm trying to concentrate, you see a few artillery pieces are being built here and trying to concentrate them all in one place so that I have like a big stack that can fight Austrians once that war begins. But that's uh have to wait a little bit longer for that war goal. Make sure to keep an eye on Holstein so that you keep influencing them. Here I noticed that I uh sent in the wrong general. I have an attack to general right here, Heinrich von von Wrangel. Pardon my pronunciation. So I decide that I want him in the battle because having attack to general can make quite a big difference. So I just send him over with along with one infantry. And now that the war goal on Austria is done, I need to immediately start justifying on Denmark. I don't have any time to waste on that. So I avoid calling. I could have called in my allies immediately, but avoid doing that, because in my experience if you call in all of your spearlings 
they usually just get themselves speed up and you lose war score and also it causes your enemies to spread out in a much more unpredictable manner. You'd rather just have them invade your own territory so that you can go and fight them efficiently. So that's why I hold off on calling in my allies. I will call them in later though once I sort of get uh, the war started. So that's the first battle one. So I kind of look at how well my troops are doing and I didn't take too much damage but since there are quite a lot of British there I still decide to send in a few extra just to be safe. I don't think they ended up being necessary though. There's a lot of RNG in how much damage you take from <laughs> trying to figure out how to most efficiently move them with that artillery over. But yeah, it's quite RNG how much damage you take in battles due to dice rolls. Sometimes you can get really unlucky and just take loads of damage or even lose battles just because you had bad dice rolls. But I think I got overall relatively lucky in this run. So uh, that's nice. That's a very good dice roll in that battle, for example. So I'm not, as you notice, I'm not like invading Austria right away because I'd rather let them invade me and fight them on my own territory. Since battle war score is by far the most efficient way to get war score quickly. And uh, on my own territory, I take less attrition, they take more attrition, I reinforce faster, they reinforce slower. So it's just. Uh, beneficial in every way, essentially. Though I will also send a stack over to Vienna specifically, because you get, I believe you get quite significantly more war score from occupying your enemy's capital compared to just normal provinces. So I figure that's probably worth it. So we just sort of keep beating up the British there. I think I'm gonna need about 40 war score on the UK before they're willing to peace, take peace, so let's keep that up. They have invaded down there, so I begin to move my battle stack over there. Meanwhile though, I try to keep those two like forest provinces. I wanna keep troops there because I'd rather have uh, like Austria and their allies invade on flat terrain because then I can attack without any terrain penalties. But those forest provinces of course would give them defensive bonuses if I attack there, so I'd rather they don't go there at all. Uh, yeah, just trying to... I send these over as well, so that they can reinforce a bit when I fight battles. And yeah, that, that's a bit of an annoying thing, because they recruit artillery all over the place when they invade me. They might sometimes end up besieging a province where artillery is being built, and then they, the artillery instantly gets destroyed which is a bit annoying but it's kind of hard to avoid since it takes quite a long time for some of the artillery to get built and this is von Seaton he's the best attack general you have at the start he has attack free so it's kind of good to know where you have him and send him in on the most important business Sometimes he ends up randomly dying, like, early on, which is quite unfortunate. Although you do have two attack, two generals as well at the start, so they are also quite good. For example, the one who's fighting in Britain right now. Yeah, so I mostly try to move troops over to 
the east, because that tends to be where they focus most of their armies, the enemies. So, so far there's quite a lot there, so I'm going to go and fight them. So things are probably going to be a bit slow here, since I have to keep my eye on well, essentially three different fronts. And it's really important that I don't... I need to play quite efficiently, I can't make too many mistakes or waste too much time. Because I am on a rather tight deadline. So I'm trying to send these those troops to Vienna, but I don't want them to get caught up in battles on the way, so I want to make sure there's nobody... Well, nobody in the way while I move them down. Again, I'd like to ensure that I have numerical superiority in any battle I get into. Technically, as long as my front line is as large as theirs, plus cavalry on the flanks, that's about as efficient as it gets, but having a bit of extra art no, a bit of extra infantry can be nice in case you get bad rolls and uh, some of your frontline regiments leave the battle early so that you can fill in the gaps. At least I think it works that way. Because what you definitely don't want is artillery on the front line. That really sucks when that happens. So here I noticed that they are trying to attack me in Lignitz and I don't want them to do that. Because again, I'd rather take offensive battles. And also that particular army in Lignitz is the one I need to besiege Vienna. And I don't want them to take damage because... I want to make sure to be able to finish that siege as soon as possible. And this is one reason why it's important to take things slow, because you kind of need to keep an eye on where all your enemies are and where they're heading and whatever. So basically just check so that they don't try to attack me anywhere where I don't want them to. And they seem to have given up now that I'm sending some of my troops over. And here I consider for safety to send some reinforcements to the battle there in Oppen. But it ends up not being necessary as they run away. And then I consider continuing to follow them, but I realize that my infantry are, is a bit too damaged. Like, I don't have the miracle superiority, and they're not in top shape. So I decide to play it a bit safer. I send back some of the more damaged ones to reinforce, and then I think I, yeah, I end up attacking a smaller enemy stack there instead. And that one is in enemy territory, so that's not ideal, but it's still flat terrain and it's right next to my border, so I figure that it's probably worth it. Yes, so now finally I see an opening, so I can start moving them towards Vienna. And I'm worried that they will attack there, which they will, in fact. So I move this army back and I see on the dates that it will be able to escape. So that's nice. And yeah, this is just... The British front is actually usually not that difficult because typically Britain just tries to retake your occupations and spread out quite a lot so then you just focus your armies and defeat in detail as Napoleon did it, I think. Keeping an eye on the justification on Denmark, I do. I need to wait for that to finish, but I also need to spear Holstein before I declare war on Denmark, because otherwise 
Holstein will join the war, since they're a puppet of Denmark. And if they join the war, then I can't influence them anymore. But fortunately, usually you end up swearing Holstein about at the same time as you uh, finish the war goal in Denmark, so the timing is usually alright. So now I try to see if there are any better attack generals anywhere, anywhere that I can <laughs> find. Spend a lot of time looking around here because it's a bit annoying, but having good generals can really make a huge difference. But at least this uh, he has attack one. So, I figured that, whatever, it's probably fine. And I noticed that my little stack there that I sent to reinforce got intercepted and destroyed here. Which is annoying, but it happens. There's nothing, nothing you can do about that, really. Yeah. It's a bit repetitive, just back and forth between the fronts. Yeah, you kind of need to pick your fights here. You do want to, of course, fight them as much as possible. But you do need to be careful not to overdo it and attack in unfavorable conditions because of course, if they, uh, if you lose battles, it's really bad. You lose war score, of course, and you also usually lose a lot of uh, men, and it takes even longer to reinforce and to waste a bunch of time. So sometimes it's better to just hold back and wait for better opportunities. And by the way, in case you're wondering why I sphere Holstein diplomatically rather than sphering Denmark and taking Holstein for war, then it's because sphering Denmark is a lot faster, but sphering Holstein is still fast enough, and taking Holstein for war is 30 war score, whereas taking Schleswig for war is only like 16 or something. So it's uh, faster to uh, take Schleswig for war and sphere Holstein. Because you're kind of tight on time there at the end. I suppose that if you really found ways to optimize this, then maybe it could worth, could be worth doing it the other way around. But I mean, it's really kind of difficult to win the war against Austria and the UK much faster anyway. So I don't think, I'm not sure how realistic that is. Here we go. Attack to general. It's kind of nice. And trying to intercept them there. If you start moving your armies when the enemy is like one day away from arriving somewhere, then they will still keep going. So you don't necessarily need to wait until they arrive. So that's uh, a way to make things a bit more efficient. Another little artillery got destroyed there. It's, it's, it's hard to avoid. There are so many enemies. Now I feel comfortable calling my allies in. If you call them in a bit later, they can still help. Because they can start occupying things and maybe win some battles here and there. But it's also just because it will make your alliance stronger and that will make Austria more willing to take peace. At least I'm pretty sure that goes into the calculations the AI makes. Fortunately, Switzerland doesn't want to join. Which is a shame, because Switzerland is, of course, quite a bit stronger than my spherelings, so they would have been a valuable asset, but at least they joined the British war, so that's something. Ok, 
Okay. <laughs> I'm just taking some time to think about my next move. So I'm pleased to see that the AI is not very smart sometimes, so instead of reinforcing that battle, they decide to go somewhere else. If they had reinforced that, there's a good chance they would have won. But, uh, you know, the AI is gonna AI, and I'm not complaining. Here I check the war score, and I'm at 36, so like I said earlier, I usually... It's usually enough to get it around 40 war score, so I know I just need a little bit more. And it's good because, as you see up there, I built a bunch of frigates at the beginning. And I can't really use them as long as I'm at war with UK because they have a big navy blockading me. <laughs> but once I'm at peace with the UK, I can send those frigates out to blockade everything that Denmark owns, basically. And that's nice because you can actually get enough war score through blockades alone to take Schleswig from Denmark. So that means I don't even need to send any armies up there. And that's good because my armies are quite busy. There are a lot of Austrian troops. And yeah, it varies how many allies Austria gets. At most they can get like all the South German miners as well as their Italian spherelings. And that can get quite hectic because yeah, there's just so many armies you have to deal with. I think this time they did not ally with Saxony at least. And maybe they did not ally with all the Italian spherelings either. So that meant I had less a little bit extra breathing room, which helped quite a lot. If you're really lucky, they might end up allying like none of their South German spherelings, but that's very rare. Here I get Vienna, and that's really the only province that I am keen on occupying. So instead I f send them back to maybe retake occupations in my own land. Check how much taking war score I got from Belgium. Only like 1% so far, but it's still something. Gonna intercept them over there. I was, I was a bit worried that, we would, that they would uh, try to reinforce in Breslau after they finished Lignitz, but they ended up going south instead, so... Usually the AI is kind of bad at reinforcing <laughs> battles. They tend to just split up. Oh, here, this war is over. They tend to just split up and then get defeated separately rather than gathering up. But sometimes they do just decide to team up and uh, that can cause a bit of issue. So yeah, these transports, those are the only ships I had from start. And I moved them over to this port right at the beginning so that they are closer to Greenland and Iceland so that I start sending them over there right away because of course Denmark owns Greenland and Iceland and also the Faroe Islands so I send ships all to every port that I have re any realistic chance of reaching of course Denmark proper is what gives the most war score, blockading that, but I might as well try to blockade as much as I can. And of course I don't have the war goal on them yet, but I can still send my start sending my ships out now that uh, I'm at peace with the UK. So again, here I'm considering what to do. There are no R Miss nearby to fight, or at least not that many, so I figure maybe I should just try to retake these occupations while I wait. But I'm a bit unsure how I want to split them up. I figure that sending 36k to one province is a little overkill and will give needless attrition, so maybe I can split them up in some in a good way, but then it ends up being a little bit 
one of them ends up being too small, so I think maybe I should send a few from this army. Because, you know, I'm attacking a 21k stack, so I don't necessarily need 40k for that. So maybe I can more efficiently do this, but then I realized that, wait, they're still in Lignitz right now, so maybe I need to wait a while before I send anyone there. But then I noticed that there are some Tuscan troops who are in fact moving into Lignitz as we speak. And at that point, I just, well, you know, fuck it. I don't care about Lignitz. I'll just go to the other province instead. And attack in the north there with a full strength. So <laughs> you have to do... Sometimes you have to do a bit of... Uh, on the fly army management like that. And unfortunately the Vienna stack that I sent got intercepted on their way back and I was considering if I should send someone down to try to help them but I'm quite far away so by the time I reach there it's not even certain that I'll have time to help them and it could that kind of thing can sometimes end up in disaster you just get a huge battle which you have an inherent disadvantage in and you just lose so much war score and so many troops. So instead I decide to play it safe and just let them get defeated and try to run away as soon as I can. And I think that ended up being the best choice here. I decide to run very far back so they don't get destroyed on the way. So instead I uh, keep on fighting here. And uh, the stack isn't very big and they don't have any artillery so I don't want to get into big battles with those. Instead I try to pick off small armies. And these troops that came from England are on their way back. They probably won't have time to do very much, but I'm still sending them over just in case. Checking Austria, kind of close to uh, being able to piece them out. The war score is worth like 20, but I probably will need a bit more than that. And Hanover sent an alliance offer, because of course they are my Sphereling now, after I released them from UK. And that's kind of nice, because Hanover is actually has a rather sizable army, enough to make a difference at least. So I check all of my other allies if anyone wants to join, but they don't want to. I suppose Netherlands is perhaps a bit pissed that I didn't let them annex Belgium, so I guess that's understandable. So now these armies have reinforced a bit, so I think it's worth to split them off, I figure. And then attack again, but I see that, yay, I have enough war score to peace out. So now I feel pretty good. I'm done with the two big wars. There's just Denmark left. All I have to do is wait for Holstein to finish sparing and to also get the war goal. And of course, like I said earlier, you can win this war just by blockades, but since I have, since I'm done with all the other wars anyway, I figured that, you know, I'll just send all of my armies up there as well, just in case, you know, it makes a difference. But, spoiler alert, it ended up not making a difference. There is one thing though, actually I haven't mentioned that, but you see I only have one Diplo point left at this point, and I actually won't get another one until January 1837. So that means I need to use that Diplo point to declare war on Denmark, but I don't have any Diplo point left to send them a peace offer if I want to end the war in 1836. So in order to finish this I actually need Denmark to send me a peace offer. And the thing is that they Sometimes do and sometimes don't. I'm not even entirely sure what determines that. 
it might just be like RNG or it might depend on like how much stronger you are than them or something but yeah so right now I'm basically just you know I have enough war score to win the war I'm just hoping they will send an offer and they did very early in fact so yeah, I uh, managed to finish on November 27, 1836, which is really nice because I was just aiming for a sub one year time, but now I even got like a month. I would have been happy with like December 27, but I got like a month faster even, which I'm happy about. Technically I could have finished one day earlier because I do think Denmark sent the offer on November 26th, but I didn't pause fast enough. <laughs> so I renamed my army J because I'm happy. Um, yeah, so what else is there to say about this? Not much else, to be honest. Taking a screenshot and stuff. So I guess if there's any questions, you can just leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, fast formation of the NGF, which I'm pretty sure I've never heard of anyone who has done it in 1836 before. I wouldn't be surprised if no one has, because it was kind of tricky. I did a lot of attempts. But yeah, the video's over now, so uh, have a nice uh, time of day.